Pasture fly season is approaching, and now is the time to evaluate your horn fly management plan for 2018. First, evaluate last year's plan. Did it provide adequate fly control? If yes, do you have a resistant management plan for the new fly season? If fly control was less than desired, now is the time to alter the plan and make the necessary changes to reduce impact of horn flies on your cattle. Horn flies are small flies, about 3 16 of an inch in length, and are usually found on the backs, sides, and pole area of pastured cattle. During a warm summer afternoon, they also may be found on the belly region of animals. Both male and female horn flies acquire more than 30 blood meals per day. After mating, the female fly will leave the animal to deposit its eggs in fresh cow manure and then return to the animal to resume feeding. The eggs hatch within about a week and larvae feed and mature in the manure, pupating in the soil beneath the manure pat. Newly emerged flies can travel several miles searching for a host. The entire life cycle can be completed in 10 to 20 days, depending upon the weather. In Nebraska, there are multiple generations produced during the summer, resulting in very high adult numbers in late summer. Large populations numbers can pose significant economic impacts in addition to affecting animal welfare. Horn flies on pasture cattle impact U.S. producers over a billion dollars annually. Horn fly impact on calf weaning weights can vary from 4 to 15 percent. Yearling weights gains can be impacted by as much as 18 percent. Horn fly impact is measured by the economic injury level, which is defined as the lowest pest population density that will cause economic damage equal to the cost of treatment. The economic injury level for horn flies is 200 flies per animal, and fly control should be implemented if the economic injury level is exceeded. Horn fly numbers on untreated Nebraska cattle can easily exceed several thousand during the late summer. Let's take a closer look at the impact of horn flies on calf weaning weights. Uh, we're gonna use a, a model of a 450 pound calf and we're gonna compare the income lost versus the income gained based on fly control with the mother cow. Let's select a 4% impact, which would result in approximately 18 pounds lost by the calf if the mother cow received no fly control or essentially uh, you would receive $28.80 less for that animal without fly control. If the mother cow had a $3 uh, cost of fly treatment, the return on that investment would be $25.80. If the cost of fly control was $5, the return would be $23.80. To give you an idea of what 200 horn flies look like, Within this three inch diameter circle, I have 200 horn flies. Well, how did your horn fly uh, numbers look like on your cattle last year? Did they resemble this particular animal? Here we see about 471 horn flies. Or did your fly control look like uh, what's on this particular animal? Very few flies. Due to the economic losses from horn flies, fly control is warranted. Many effective control measures are available to manage horn flies on pastured cattle. Selecting the most desirable method for your operation will depend on efficacy, cost, convenience, and herd health management practices. Let's discuss current horn fly control methods. Recently, insecticides have been placed into numbered insecticide mode of action groups, commonly referred to as MOAs, and these are based on how they work against the insects. Control products listed on the following slides will be accompanied with their mode of action group number. 
Dust bags deliver insecticides that are incorporated into a very fine dust that filters through the bottom of the bag when cattle make contact with the bag. The most effective way to use this delivery system is to locate bags that cattle must pass under the bags on their way to water, feed, mineral, or salt. This can be accomplished by fencing around water tanks, suspending the bags in the exit or entrance openings. Studies have shown dust bags placed in a free choice arrangement will provide between 25 to 50 percent less control than compared with a forced use dust bag arrangement. One dusting location with two bags is adequate for treating approximately 50 to 60 head of cattle. Dust bags should be hung at mid shoulder level of the cow so cattle can make the maximum contact with the bags. And here are a list of uh, available dusts uh, for use in Nebraska. Oilers and rubs are also most effective when used in a forced use arrangement, such as at mineral stations or entrances to water locations. Insecticides used with these devices should be mixed with number two diesel fuel or mineral oil and should be recharged weekly. Please do not use motor oil to dilute the insecticide as this will be harmful to the cattle. And here we have a number of different products available for use on oilers and rubs. I might point out that Ravap is a restricted use pesticide and you must be a certified pesticide applicator to purchase that particular product. Porons are ready to use insecticide products applied in measured doses along the back lines of animals. They provide fly reduction for several weeks, so reapplication is required throughout the fly season, depending upon the horn fly pressure. And here we have a list of products that are available for use in Nebraska. Animal sprays can be applied with low and high pressure sprayers. And when using these types of sprayers, cattle should be gathered and corralled to ensure adequate spray coverage. Animal sprays will provide between seven and 21 days of control and will need to be reapplied throughout the fly season. And here are a list of products that are approved for use uh, as animal sprays. Uh, please note that Vapona EC and Ravap EC are a restricted use pesticide. Mistblower applications are made in the pasture where cattle are grazing, thereby reducing animal stress related to gathering and penning of the cattle. Worm fly control can range from seven to 21 days depending upon the fly pressure. Also, a mistblower sprayer can be used to control two other pasture fly species, the face fly and stable fly. And, uh, the products listed here are available for use and labeled in Nebraska. Feed throughs, oral larvicides, insect growth regulators, also referred to as IGRs, are insecticides that are incorporated into mineral blocks, tubs, loose mineral, or loose salt. These products prevent horn fly larvae and manures, manure pads from becoming adults. Oral larvicides are effective when consumed in sufficient quantities throughout the fly season. Adult horn fly numbers may appear unaffected if cattle consuming feed additives are in close proximity to untreated cattle. An untreated herd may provide enough flies to keep fly numbers above the economic injury level for both treated and untreated cattle. And listed below are three of the products uh, available for use as a feed through. Insecticide air tags and strips have one or more insecticides embedded in a plastic matrix. Movement of the head or grooming of the animal slowly releases small amounts of the insecticide over time that travels through the hair coat of the animal. In Nebraska, air tags and strips should be applied during the last week of May or the first week of June to achieve maximum control throughout the fly season. 
ear tags and strips applied too early may decline in efficacy while fly numbers continue to increase uh, throughout the uh, remaining part of the summer, resulting in economic loss. Adult animals should receive two tags or strips. Tagging just the calf will not provide the desired level of horn fly control on the mother cow. All insecticide ear tags and strips should be removed at the end of each fly season to help manage fly resistance. Here's a list of organophosphate air tags with the mode of action group 1B that are available for use uh, in Nebraska. And here's a list of synthetic pyrethroid air tags with the mode of action group number 3A. I might point out that Python products um, are available in tags and strips. We have one tag that uh, is of the macrocyllic lactone group, mode of action group six. It's the XP820. It is available in a tag and strip form. We have two combination ear tags combining two different modes of action. The first of one is double barrel VP. It is comprised of a synthetic pyrethroid and an organophosphate. The second tag is new for 2018. It is called Trizap. It is comprised of a synthetic pyrethroid and a macrocyclic lactone. We do have a, another means of application, uh, a compressed air application uh, called the VET gun. It's a device similar to a paintball gun and it applies an individual capsule of insecticide called a VET cap to an animal and can provide horn flight control between 10 and 35 days. Vet caps can be used on all beef cattle weighing at least 600 pounds. And there are two different formulations available. One contains a synthetic pyrethroid, and the second one contains a avamectin compound. Regardless of your choice of application method, you need a resistant management plan. Many horn fly populations in Nebraska exhibit a level of resistance to synthetic pyrethroid insecticides. The recommended practice to manage resistance is to alternate mode of action groups, and that applies to dusts, insecticide ear tags, animal sprays, pour-ons, feed-throughs and IGRs, as well as the compressed air application devices. Continual use of products from a single group against a pest species can lead to reduced control and resistance to all products within that group. To improve fly control and minimize resistance, do not apply insecticides within the same group number repeatedly. Rotate between mode of action groups during the fly season. For current Nebraska control recommendations referred to EC 1550, Nebraska Management Guide for Insect Pests of Livestock and Horses. And that can be accessed at entomology.unl.edu forward slash livestock or uh, access a, a website called veterinaryentomology.org. When applying any insecticide control product, please read and follow label instructions. If you have additional questions about pasture fly control, you can reach me at 308-696-6721 or by email at dboxler1 at unl.edu.